Well, well, just when I thought that here in Florida, were we going to get away with it? Nope. Just like in New York with the Tren de Aragua uh, getting flooded with those criminals from Venezuela. A prison gets emptied in Haiti. And they come over here. They're getting caught all over the place. Watch this in just a second. But I'll tell you this. It's going to get uglier. It's Haiti now. Venezuela uh, last month. The Haitian gangs now are breaking right through those freaking criminals from Haiti. Break out of prison. Coming to Florida via those boats. Nice boats too. Getting cut with night vision goggles, weapons, all kinds of stuff. Hmm? Yep. Coming here for a better life. Just like does Venezuela, Tren de Aragua gangs up in New York. Watch this. Partnership, ...stopping a smuggling operation right here in the state. This is video of the Sebastian Inlet Border Patrol. They had drugs, they had night vision gear, uh, and were, were uh, boating very recklessly, which would potentially... And speaking of resources, extra state resources have been here in the Florida Keys since January of last... But now we're That's barbecue to there. Haiti ...with fears of mass migration amid the gang violence. Governor DeSantis is holding a news conference today after announcing he was sending patrols to the Keys to stop migrants fleeing the country and detailing a recent interdiction of our coast. Local 10 News reporter Janine Stanwood is live in Key Largo this midday with the details. Janine. And the governor says that the state continues to monitor the situation in Haiti and continues to take action on the issue of illegal immigration. I want to show you video from just a few weeks ago. This is an example, he says, of a partnership stopping a smuggling operation right here in the state. This is video of the Sebastian Inlet Border Patrol, Sheriff's deputies and FWC stopping a vessel with 24 Haitian migrants on board, including children. We're told two captains on board were arrested in this case. He highlights this case as conditions in Haiti deteriorate and there are now fears of a mass exodus, potentially overwhelming law enforcement here and posing dangers to those who take to the sea. Take a listen. You know what's crazy, though? I'll tell you what's worrisome. What's crazy is that um, it hits home big time. I fish Sebastian Inlet all the time. I'm here in Florida. I take my boat, drop it out. If I don't take my boat, I just go over a nice pier that they have there. Uh, but the Sebastian Inlet, it ain't that big, you know? So hits home, man. It's incredible. Yep. Our Florida Fish and Wildlife <laughs> Officers interdicted a vessel that had 25 illegal immigrants, potential illegal immigrants from Haiti uh, in their boat, in their vessel. They had firearms, they had drugs, they had night vision gear. Here for um, a better life, though. They were uh, boating very recklessly, which mm -hmm. would potentially endanger other folks. So that uh, vessel was, was interdicted uh, near the Sebastian Inlet, uh, and those illegal aliens uh, were turned over to the Coast Guard for, for deportation. So you know, that's a good point. That's a very good point, and this is the point that I'm talking about. We keep calling them uh, illegal immigrants. No, it's illegal aliens. Illegal migrants? No, it's illegal aliens. That's the correct terminology. As a matter of fact, I'm going to try my best to start calling them that. The message is, is the last thing you should want to do is get on some boat and think you're going to come through from any of these islands to get to the state of Florida most likely scenario is you will be stopped and you will be returned to your country of origin. So it's a hazardous journey. It's not worth doing. We have the resources uh, that are going to continue to keep the people of Florida safe. This first one is going to be uh, driving without a valid license. With three back-to-back -back signatures, Governor Ron DeSantis signs three bills to fight undocumented immigration Good. in Florida. You want to be proactive. We are proactive. We can wait to get overwhelmed and then do something. SB 1036 will be talking about Biden there. But you know what's what, what's impressive about that? I'm going to tell you what's impressive about that. Um, they're going to come here, you know. Uh, there's plenty of PPUs here in uh, Florida. But um, you got to love DeSantis, man. You know, uh, in my opinion, not to get too political about it, he made a mistake trying to run against Trump. But man, he's a great president of Florida. Uh, we need more governors like this, uh, you know, but it hits me because I don't remember exactly where it was, but there was a uh, illegal uh, alien that was um, working as a teacher 
uh, I don't remember exactly where it was. So I'll put it up here in a second. But he was working as a teacher in, um, at a Maryland church. So meet Alvin Giovanni Alvaro Lopez, a twice deported illegal invader who was working at a teacher, no, who was working as a teacher uh, at a Maryland church. He was just arrested and charged with sexually abusing multiple minors. One of the victims was a six-year-old. But that's why I think that um, checking documentation as a driver's license even is so important. They are here with an invalid driver's license. That's a way to pick them up. You know, you got people working in Maryland as teachers. You got people working uh, with the Lake and Raleigh. The guy, his brother, was working in the campus with a fake um, green card. So, you know, here in Florida, hopefully, uh, we're trying to be proactive and attack it from all which way. I support that. The phone now is Florida Senator Rick Scott. Senator, thanks for jumping on with us. We appreciate it. So what's going on in Haiti now really raises two very significant issues. First of all, there are a number of Americans who are trapped there and begging to get out. We don't know the exact number. So what should the Biden administration be doing on that front? How is it that whenever there is chaos anywhere in the world, and Americans are caught, you know, in the midst of it. This administration is, is so slow at reacting, man. I'm pretty sure that we still got people in Afghanistan. You know, um, it's such a traitor administration. God, these freaking people, man. Asked before, boatloads of Haitians trying to escape the country, and sometimes those small boats that are designed to hold maybe 80 people have two or 300 people on them. Of course. Making their way to the shores of Florida. So what should the Biden administration do to prepare for that? Well, it, first off, it, the heart, it, it's, it's really heartbreak. We've got a lot of patients that live in my state. Um, and so, you know, I'm talking to them about what's happening there. and They're scared to death for their families uh, that are still there. So, but look, this is... This is the political unrest that's been caused by a Biden administration that doesn't know what it's doing. It's appeased Cuba and Venezuela and Nicaragua, and now it's completely unprepared for what's going on here. I've been getting briefings, and they appear to be completely unprepared uh, for what to, what to do now. And, and, and we can't just, I mean, this is, we're just creating instability. So. Uh, one, we've got to make sure we take we protect Americans. We've got to do everything we can to protect Americans. Yeah. Uh, but we got an administration that doesn't think that way. We have host we've got hostages in Gaza. He's more focused on getting money to Gaza than he is to take care of our American hostages yes. been held by by Hamas. True. We need to make sure our uh, Coast Guard and our Department of Defense has every resource necessary to make sure we don't have uh, you know thousands and thousands and thousands of people uh, trying to to our shores as a result of the un unrest there. Uh, and, and the Biden can't keep doing what he's doing. He's got 8 million people pour across our border, totally unvetted. We can't be letting people come into our country completely unvetted from everywhere around the world. I mean, think about that. Including China. On plane, 90,000 people. You just, you just can't keep doing this and expect that we're not going to have issues in our country. So um, we, we've got to just, you know, we got to do better. The Biden administration, here's how you should dub them up. They create a magnet for illegal immigration. They appease evil regimes. And they force the American people to pay for all this unrest. Yes. Uh, for humanitarian crisis, for mass border crossings, for all this. I mean, this is, this is all just increasing every month under the Biden administration. This is just chaos. Wildlife officers interdicted a vessel that had 25 illegal immigrants, potentially illegal immigrants from Haiti. They had firearms, they had drugs, they had night vision gear, and those illegal aliens uh, were turned over to the Coast Guard for, for deportation. Our next guest has been helping kids in Haiti for decades and knows firsthand the threat these gangs pose to their and our homeland. Evangelist Jack Brewer joins us now. Jack, it's great to see you this, this morning. Let, let's start with some of your personal experience in Haiti. You know, this is a particularly rough moment, but Haiti goes... Uh, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't care about that. I don't care about that. Never achieving some level of... intelligence of any mass exodus from Haiti, law enforcement on all levels are on standby. Because you'll go out and people will think they're taking some pill, which maybe they shouldn't be taking, but it's 
fence lengths with fence and all, that could be enough. So that's been dead. It's also the case just to have a free and orderly society, the sheer number of people that have poured in, even if it was all legal, you can't take in 10 million people like That is this. completely it correct. It overwhelms schools, it overwhelms health care, it overwhelms all the resources that are supposed to be dedicated to helping American citizens. Actually, I shared this with you. Uh, when Hurricane Maria uh, that hit Puerto Rico really bad, and Puerto Rico is, a, is an associated state, right? A free but independent state, something like that, right? Um, a lot of them came here to Florida, and we still we still dealing with it. We still dealing with it. A ton of apartments were made everywhere. Uh, pff, traffic was crazy here where I live at. Uh, it used to take me five minutes to get from point A to point B. Now it's taking me forty five minutes. Uh, Again, and that was legal, legal migration from Puerto Rico here because of that crisis, right? Because of what happened with Maria. And, um, and that was a humanitarian thing. I get it, you know, but that was a legal one. And we're still dealing with that influx right now as we speak with traffic and, and um, even crime in some areas. So now imagine illegal immigration. People that not only don't belong here are coming here to cause harm they're coming here to take theirs to take it from you beautiful american people and what biden's administration does is he's really put people here illegally at the front of the line you know they can fly around this country without having identification you would never be allowed to do that with tsa and all this other stuff they'll put them up in hotels and pay for the hotels but this is this you know we're not ready we're not we don't have all the resources there um think about we got we're, we're hearing from a lot of americans that are stuck there and then again they can't get out i mean this is we you can you can see what's what was going on and why you know why this is why did we have Americans stuck there and why we're just now getting people out? We did, this, we did the same thing in Afghanistan uh, where, you know, we, had, we ended up bringing a whole bunch of unvetted people because we, cause the, the airport and, 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 uh, looked so bad. You know, are the Americans out and people with special visas? And as a result, we brought in a whole bunch of people. So I know our military wants to do the right thing, but we got to get an administration that is, I mean, they can't keep appeasing everybody, appease, appease, appease create a magnet and think this is going to get better for us. See, that's where I have a problem. That's where I have a problem with that statement. This administration does not care about appeasing anybody. They care about bringing an influx of illegal immigration in order to cause distress, in order to cause chaos. Especially now knowing that President Trump is going to win in the landslide. So, <clears throat> it's not about appeasing anybody. It's about creating chaos. When you say appeasing people, there is a hint of well- meaning of well intention in there and there is no well intention with this administration it's about bringing in people to cause chaos division and it's going to be horrible i'll even go further on this one prepare for a summer of chaos this i can tell you you can see it even on the liberal news the msnbc's the cnn's they're covering this illegal immigration they're covering all the chaos that is causing the covering the crimes, not as thorough as many independent uh, news reporters are doing it, but they're covering it. And what's happening is that the American people are get, becoming sick of it. And one thing that you do know about the American people is that once they had enough, it's enough. And they'll rise up. You guys will rise up. We'll rise up. I'm right there with you. You know, come the summer, eventually, the American people are going to say we are done with it and illegals, illegal immigrants, because they don't follow any laws, they're going to revolt. They're not going to be want to be pushed around. They're not going to want to be uh, taken out. They're not going to want to be sent back. They're going to revolt. They're going to start chaos and uh, we're going to want to fight back. And it's going to be it's going to be intense. It's going to be intense. Those criminals don't follow laws. Those criminals get aggressive but Americans you have a way of doing so as well if you need be and um, it's gonna get ugly I just feel it in my spirit it's gonna get ugly it's gonna get better for us and it's gonna it's making Americans 
it's more dangerous for America to be anywhere around the world. If you're an American, you're taken hostage. You think this president's going to give a damn about you? I mean, he, he, nope. he doesn't even, he does, he's never talked about the hostages that Hamas is has, but he wants to go to give a whole bunch of humanitarian money uh, to Gaza that's going to go directly to Hamas. To build that's what Hamas. I mean. So There's no word meaning on that. That is not focused on American citizens. That's the number one thing, the safety of American citizens. He is not doing it. I can't imagine he will get better in Haiti. Uh, so, Senator, history in Haiti has a habit of repeating itself again and again and again uh, in ways that they wouldn't do for American citizens. And so I think what these bills will do, yes, someone comes and, and commits a crime after being deported, they're going to have the book thrown at them. That's good. Uh, we're ensuring that these local governments can't recognize any of these rogue out-of-state licenses, uh, making sure it's you know, driving without a license going to be treated very seriously if you're here illegally. I think it's, it's, it's all good. It will reduce criminal aliens for sure. But I think it'll also just be a disincentive that, that Florida, you know, we probably have as many foreign born as a percentage of any state, but, but we want people to do it right. Um, and, and we don't want to have a massive number of people point. Look, we've got people coming and pouring into the state from from Illinois and New York and California as it is. Really, you know, we can't have uh, an influx beyond that. We just wouldn't be able to accommodate it. So I think that this will help. You know, they said they were sanctuary jurisdictions, so they were totally willing to talk the talk. We're not a sanctuary state. We do not allow sanctuary cities, and we're adding to what, you know, when, when even the New York Times is admitting that our bills from last year were the strongest in the country, you know we must be doing things right. right. Help me understand really quickly, Jack, because I think in order to understand what could potentially be literally washing ashore in America, we first have to understand what's happening in Haiti. So help me understand the level of criminality, gang, rule. I mean, we know what, we know a little more about what it's like today. We hear about, you know, Barbecue, the main gang leader running barbecue. the streets of Haiti. But barbecue. What's, what are the role gangs have played? What's it like in Haiti on an ongoing basis? So just take out your perspective or understanding of what a gang member is. And throw that away. Uh, these, these folks are now ruling the society. And so you, you talk about uh, whether it's their local government, even all the way up to their national government. You know, the UN did a report uh, in 28 of the 30 senators in Haiti all had gang related ties and, 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 and drug deals. See? Uh, and so when you start thinking about it, these gangs are controlling the politicians, they're controlling the streets. Uh, they've already taken over the ports, even the main port in Port au Prince. Right now, as we speak, um, the, the local law enforcement officers are battling with the gangs for control of the main point port into the country so if you can imagine all the tax money and revenue everything's pay to play uh, i have about 120 orphans right now uh, up in kids cost i don't know what i'm going to do we're trying to get them food we can't give get them food will uh because the, the gangs are there so the see the bottom line venezuelan gangs coming through salvadorian gangs coming through now haitian gangs coming through um let's review this one really quick how about chinese nationals how about Chinese gang to try it? Watch this. The cartel now reportedly working with Chinese snakehead gangs to smuggle Chinese nationals into the U.S. This Chinese triad, I mean, they are sophisticated. You, your listeners need to understand that this is not the dirty workers like the cartel. The cartel is doing the dirty work, but the Chinese triad is very sophisticated. Harvard trained lawyers, Harvard tech trained accountants that master the money laundering part of this. So mm -hmm. what keeps me up at night? Harvard trained lawyers. That's, that's bad enough, frankly. That is very concerning and alarming. I think our national security apparatus has to do something about that. But what really keeps me up at night is the professional military subversive actors, which are essentially agents of chaos that could be coming across and probably are coming across our southern border. And when you talk about criminals coming from China, they absolutely are linked to the CCP for one specific reason, because of the banking system. They all use the Chinese state-controlled, in many cases, state-owned banking system to be able to move move the illicit money and illicit Correct. money from their mm -hmm. uh, illicit activities. And so I think that this is it falls within the doctrine of what China calls unrestricted warfare, which they include criminal organizations as part of that warfare to attack the United States. So a while ago, I made a video about that. You can look it up here. But I can tell you, they are not as dumb as the Venezuelans are. They're not going to be as stupid as the Haitian gangs are. They're not going to be as dumb as the um, Salvatruchas are, the MS-13. These Chinese nationals are smarter. 
this infiltration is different. So is the terrorist infiltration as well. They are more patient. The chaos they want to cause is bigger. They have a larger meaning. They have a larger objective. They're not here just to take theirs. These are Harvard trained lawyers and accountants that are coming in, infiltrating, sent directly by the Chinese president. I don't care what anybody says. There is no way that you can just leave China nonchalantly. There's a process to leave China. Mm -hmm. And those terrorists that are coming through, they're not doing anything yet, but they will. And when they do, it's going to be meaningful. It's not like these thugs, like the Venezuelan thugs, just coming here to take your purse. It's not like these Salvatruchas that are coming here to only rape and destroy, like the uh, Trindarago as well. Okay? They're not here just for that. These Haitian gang idiots, they're here for the same thing as the Venezuelans, as the Salvatruchas. They're here for the same things. But these Chinese nationals, these terrorists, they have a larger calling in life. Mark my words. A smuggler's SUV raced along the border fence and dropped another group at the same spot. The cartel now reportedly working with Chinese snakehead gangs to smuggle Chinese nationals into the U.S. That's going to work out well. Way from Mexico through a yep. gap between the 30-foot steel border fence and rock. Ducking under a bit of razor wire and into the United States. That's going to work out just fine. As encounters with illegal immigrants from China have skyrocketed over 4,000% since 2021. There's a the video Times about that. The is out with a piece this morning called From China to New York by way of the southern border. They report that more than 21,000 Chinese nationals have arrived in New York City since October of 2022. Of course, we've been reporting this. It's actually... Uh, so have I. 20,000 people just since October of last year. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the beginning of the fiscal year. These na and these Chinese nationals are not saying uh, not staying in the city's migrant shelters. One migrant said that he stayed in a Chinese massage parlor in Queens that charged him ten dollars a night. And migrants from China are emerging as. You hear that? They're not staying in these shelters like the Venezuelans, like the. Haitians are going to be staying like the uh, Mexicans. Oh, no, they're not staying in those shelters. They're coming to people directly. They're coming here directly to people they know. They're connected in here. They're going to come to somebody who knows somebody who sent them by somebody. They're going to eventually open businesses and they're going to infiltrate 100% smarter than this dumbass Venezuelans, these dumbass uh, uh, Haitians, all these gang members, all these illegals that are breaking in, like these dumbasses, these Chinese are not those people. They're not. These terrorists are not those people. But uh, they have a bigger calling, they have a larger thing coming. The fastest growing group of people trying to cross the southern border into the United States the trend that we're seeing with this vast increase in the number of Chinese individuals coming into, the, into this country uh, is, is astounding. And Have you heard that at all? We should be looking at what China's doing, again, to try to weaken the United States. We, we see their efforts, whether it's the spy balloon, social media. Uh, they continue this effort. Uh, this surge of, of immigrants coming across the border, I think, does have potential national security. Be honest. Have you heard at all? that they are the largest group coming through that border? Have you seen that anywhere in the news? Be honest, no. But you're hearing about all these other groups. You're not, it, nobody's talking about the quiet part. Here and there, you see that a terrorist came through and they caught him. Like right now at the border, it's all over the news that they caught uh, Colombia's most wanted criminal. Mm -hmm. But um, do you know that the largest group coming through was those Chinese nationals? I bet you didn't know that. They are making us weak from within. It is incredible to me that we're allowing this. Dominican Republic is not allowing those Haitians to go right across from them. They're not even, they're only separated by barbed wire, pretty much. And they're not allowing them in. Why? Plus, a lot of them don't even want to go there. They want to come here to the land of milk and honey. The 
dumbest country in the world when it comes to trying to play nice and being politically correct and this country right here. But you American people, you are gonna get mad here very soon and that's where my faith lays. Everybody knows there's nothing worse than a pissed off Marine. There's nothing worse than a pissed off American. You're not gonna get away with it, Chinese. You're not gonna get away with it, you terrorists, you Trinidadagua losers, you Haitian gangs coming here. I don't care who lets you in here. I do not care who lets you in here. There is more of us than there is of them. And you're taking a chance. You're gonna end up paying that price. I promise you that. Human trafficking. There it is. The triads. Yes, sir. Yes. Boom. Thank you. Oh, let me guess though, right? That's, let me guess. The fact that he said that, many of you are going to say, what a racist thing to say. Massage parlors, nail salons, restaurants. What a racist thing to say. You are weak. You are willfully blinded and this country is being taken from you. But you are so quick at calling people racist that are trying to speak truth. Pathetic is what you are. Yes. Harvard trained engineers coming from China into the United States and then setting up human trafficking businesses here. What can you tell us about this? Well, Maria, we know that the Chinese are manipulative, they're exploitive, they will do everything they can to weaken the United States. This is only 100%. one of many of their, of their tactics and the things that, that they are doing. Uh, to harm the United States. I think we should uh, be responding to this. I think that, again, it's a result of a failed policy by the Biden administration yes. and an open border and allowing China to operate in our country in this way. This is not in our best interest. And um, I'll actually go even further. You think it's a coincidence that Gavin Newsom for once decided to do something nice, clean up the city? For what? to receive uh, the Chinese president, to impress him. Why is Gavin Newsom trying to impress the uh, Chinese president? Also, right there in that side of town, why would they have an illegal Chinese immigrant become part of the election commission? Why are they catering so much to the Chinese? You know why. You know why. Oh, TikTok. Yeah, they want to go ahead and ban TikTok because the Chinese bad. Bullshit, and you know it. All right. Oh, really? So we're gonna not let them have TikTok here in the country. They can own a bunch of land. They can open a bunch of restaurants, and we applaud them. You even had that Nikki Haley garbage uh, giving a bunch of land to the Chinese. Hmm? Oh, we have to be careful with TikTok because they're infiltrating our children with that. But give them all the land, all the businesses that they want in here. That's not a big issue. It's a fraud. What they want to do is stop people like me, people like you communicating with each other. Anyway, that's all I have. If you find any value in these videos, please consider 
hitting the thumbs up and uh, subscribing. Please share these videos. Help me spread the word. I'm going to continue to make these videos, but help me spread the word. More of us need to speak. More of us need to be louder. More of us need to continue to spread this truth. More of us that know better need to continue to reach uh, as many people as we can. Uh, and this is the only medium I have right now, you know. Uh, so God bless you and God bless the USA.